factors related to the development of substance abuse or addictive behavior. Okay, so make sure you write that at the top of your paper. That's the learning outcome. This is what you could be tested on for the week and the May. Um, and basically, we are going to focus on alcohol addiction. Um, there are other types of addiction. Um, so if you guys want a little more choice, you want to do some independent work, you can always go to the pages in the Crane textbook and do your own research on nicotine. I find it to be a little bit vague um, and slightly outdated. Um, there's also a great HBO documentary in the library that talks about cocaine addiction and a little bit about the stop and go circuitry in the brain. Um, but we're going to talk about alcohol uh, because I think alcohol is kind of really interesting because, as you see on the slide, unlike other drugs, the effects of alcohol involve actions at multiple receptors and neurochemical systems at widespread neuroanatomical sites throughout the brain. So what does that mean? Involve actions at multiple receptors in different systems at different sites throughout the brain. If you ignore some of the big words, you're still getting the, the, the meat of what this means. Basically, alcohol addiction can't be traced back to one place in the body, one part of the brain. It's very kind of complicated, um, and there's a lot more to it. So it's kind of interesting, and we're going to go with that. Um, so basically, we have identified five major factors, five main factors related to the development of alcohol addiction. Um, the first two, age and um, genes, or uh, the disease model basically, we don't have any more slides about those, because they're pretty straightforward. So age um, can be a factor because the adolescent brain is more impulsive. Um, and that's obviously going to put you at a higher risk for uh, becoming addicted to any drug. And then, of course, you know, like anything, um, any illnesses that we look at this year, we want to look at the concordance rate for twins, right? And we see that it's high in general for twins. 76% um, for monozygotic twins and 61% for diazygotic twins. What does that mean? Well, remember, it means that if you are an identical twin, monozygotic, um, then the chance that you're, if you have um, an alcohol addiction, set, the chances are 76% that your twin will as well. That's very, very, very high. Okay? Um, the next three, we're going to do slides, and we're going to look into them a little bit more, um, and so let's head to dopamine. Alright, so dopamine function. You guys all know that dopamine is a neurotransmitter, and we know it's which increases dopamine concentrations in the nucleus accumbens. Um, don't write any of this down yet. I want you to read through it and take out the most important parts. What does alcohol do? Well, it increases dopamine in the nucleus accumbens, which is the pleasure center of the brain. It's as simple as that. Um, you don't necessarily have to have all the little in-between details, but that's what alcohol does. Um, again, let's read this next part without taking notes, and then let's write down notes that make sense to us and that are a little bit more simple. Over the course of chronic exposure, the function of dopamine starts to adapt and counter the stimulation supplied by the alcohol. The drinker has to drink more to feel the goodness, okay? So, you need to drink more alcohol to feel the effects because your body starts to counter that goodness that you're feeling, the reward that you're feeling because of the dopamine. Okay, so how does it do that? Well, it's something called the opponent process theory. Alright, so opponent process theory. This is um, an important theory associated with um, the dopamine side of alcohol addiction. You need to know this name, Solomon. Okay, Solomon is a pretty easy name. Um, and we're going to be associate Solomon with the opponent process theory. Okay, the opponent process theory basically says that um, when we feel the when we drink alcohol, we feel the positive effects and we feel happy. That's called an A state or an A process. Okay? Um, what happens is our body likes equilibrium, right? Our body likes to be normal. Our body doesn't like to be too high or too low. It doesn't like too much or too little of anything. That, that has to do with food, drugs, um, emotions, anything, right? So, um, when we are taking a drug, and this could go for heroin, alcohol, many different drugs, you feel that kind of euphoric A state, and what does your body naturally do? Well, it tries to counter that, so that to bring your body back down to equilibrium. And the 
counter reaction is called the B state or the B reaction. Okay? And basically, what happens is when you first start with the alcohol, okay, um, your A state is quite strong, your B state is quite, quite weak because your body's new, kind of to dealing with this drug, it doesn't really know what to do. But the longer you take the drug, the better your body gets at countering this A state, the, the feelings of happiness. Okay? And as you can see in these pictures, okay, um, if you look at the top two, you see that the B state grows. Okay? It gets a little bit bigger and gets a little bit longer. Um, if you look on the bottom two pictures, you see that the A state starts off very strong, followed by a small B state. Now, if what it is happiness, um, to kind of simplify a little bit, what could the B state involve? Yeah, some sort of downer, okay, associated with not feeling very nice. Okay, and so this could be considered um, kind of the withdrawal symptoms once you're addicted. And it can be, you know, um, a little bit, uh, you could, you could, I mean, I guess on the short term you can associate it with a hangover, but more long term, um, it kind of in reality you're looking more at um, withdrawal symptoms. Okay? You feel horrible when you are withdrawing from a drug. And so at first we see that the withdrawal symptoms are very small, very little, they don't last very long. But as we get more and more addicted, the A state becomes smaller from that same amount of drugs, so you need to take more. And that B state grows and grows and grows, doesn't it? So basically what we're seeing is that um, we need to keep taking that drug if we want to keep feeling the effects of the A state. 